Hi everyone, my name is Brian Kadraki and on behalf of my co-authors, Johnny So and Nick Nikiparakis, today I'll be presenting our work titled Uninvited Guests, Analyzing the Identity and Behavior of Certificate Transparency Bots. So as I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar, uh, the 2010s were fraught with uh, cer uh, certificate authority compromise uh, with incidents such as the Komodo and DigiNotar hacks resulting in many users falling victim to man-in-the-middle attacks uh, from attackers impersonating trademarks such as Google and Microsoft. These incidents resulted in the creation of the Certificate Transparency System, which, is the sol which was created as a solution to the problem of TLS certificate misissuance. It's simply an append-only log, a public append-only log, of certificate creations, including the domains associated with each certificate. This allows the public to audit the actions of CAs and allows trademark owners to identify compromise of their own systems by observing a, a certificate creation that the, they did not uh, put in the request for. So while the certificate transparency system has undoubtedly added to the public's trust in the TLS ecosystem, there has also been unintended consequences that we wanted to study in this work. Um, and that being the fact that the adoption of TLS on the web is constantly growing and the amount of certificate authorities that support cert certificate transparency is also growing. This has led to certificate transparency turning into a proxy log for all new website creations as they come online. So in this work, we wanted to answer the following questions. First, do web bots monitor CT logs for potential targets? Also, do they utilize the fact that they're able to observe the domain or multiple domains associated with certificates to target specific hosts based on the content of their domains? And lastly, what are their behavior and are they malicious? So to answer these questions, we created a system, a honeypot system that we call CTPOT. Uh, and it's simply, uh, starting from the bottom right and moving counterclockwise, it's just a series of measurement nodes, uh, each hosting an HTTP reverse proxy server that simply just forwards all requests that it receives to a centralized database node, uh, along with an SSH, Telnet, and FTP honeypot. Periodically, each of these nodes registers certificates for pseudo-random uh, domains uh, and using the Let's Encrypt API. And when Let's Encrypt receives these requests, it will log uh, th these certificate creations to one or many certificate transparency logs, which will then be ingested by malicious and benign bots who will then send requests back to our measurement nodes. And this cycle just continues on and on. So as you're probably thinking, an important aspect of this is building attractive domains that allow us to answer the questions that we uh, were seeking to answer. So here's an example of one of the domains that we used in our experiments. Uh, so starting from the topmost subdomain, we start with a pseudo random string that encodes the timestamp of the certificate creation. So here this is uh, December 15, 2021. Uh, so since we have a random aspect to the domain, we know that Anyone who visits this domain is not simply just guessing the, the subdomain and, and visiting us randomly. Uh, they observe this domain on certificate transparency. Next, the lowest level subdomain is uh, a categorical string which represents one of three content type groups. So first, impersonating strings. So these are the names of popular trademarks like Apple, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, allowing us to observe potentially anti-phishing bots who are scouring certificate transparency for impersonating sites. We also have sensitive strings, which are, include strings indicating that there's a potentially sensitive or vulnerable service listening at this endpoint, like WP admin, let's say. And lastly, baseline strings, which just allow us to compare the results of the first two categories to the baseline of, of requests that any website will receive when creating a certificate. And lastly, we ensured that our primary domains uh, were benign and uninteresting with all possible trademark conflicts removed um, by appending the name of a tree, flower, and a bird together um, so that we can concentrate 
all uh, visitor attention or bot attention to the middle subdomain, one of the categorical strings. So over the course of a 10-week period, we deployed 12 of these CTPOT measurement nodes. Uh, in total, we generated over 4,600 TLS certificates, which resulted in over 1.5 million HTTP requests from almost 32,000 unique bot IP addresses. So looking at the figure on the bottom, you could see that we were comparing the distributions of visitors who, who visited each of the three uh, domain groups along with visitors who simply just sent a request to the IP address of our measurement nodes. And what we found is that the, there's very, very little overlap between the IP-based bots in the yellow circle and the CT bots in the other three circles. So this means that CT bots occupy their own subcategory of all web bots, uh, as opposed to being all in the same group. So observing the statistics on the requests that we received, uh, alarmingly found that new domains receive requests from these bots in as little as 12 seconds after certificate creation. This means that any sort of a website administrator that sets their website up and creates a certificate should ensure that all security mechanisms are in place before the certificate is created. We also observed diverging behavior among the bots targeting these different groups. Uh, so for example, uh, bots targeting impersonating domains will send a single request to that domain almost 80% of the time, whereas bots targeting the other two groups uh, will send, will ex exhibit the same behavior in almost 30% of the time. Using TLS fingerprinting, we were able to observe that, uh, unsurprisingly, these bots uh, spoof their user agents. Uh, so we found that anywhere from 75 to 85% of these bots claim to be a real browser, such as Google Chrome or Firefox, but the underlying TLS fingerprint showed that their TLS library is a, typically a, a scraping library like the Python request library, with a real browser being used only 2 to 12% of the time. We also observed malicious behavior among these bots. Uh, alarmingly also, with the bots targeting sensitive domains, uh, exhibiting uh, uh, requests to our network honeypots almost double uh, compared to the other two groups. And of all three of these groups, we found that n over 90% attempted authentication with these honeypots. So these weren't just TCP requests to the you know, port, say port 22, to see if the port was open the bots actually went ahead and tried to authenticate with the honeypot. So in conclusion, we found that web bots use CT to discover newly created websites. And we found that they target these domains based on subdomain content and exhibit different behaviors depending on what they're actually intending to do. We also found that bots immediately arrive after certificate creation meaning, again, that any website administrator that is creating a website and setting it up should ensure that they create their certificate as the last step of this setup process after all security mechanisms are in place and tested thoroughly. We also found that malicious bots are among the overall CT bot population, with uh, many attempting to authenticate with services beyond HTTP servers. We also have a data set available at uninvited-guests.github.io. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions.